This afternoon, I'm joined by designer, stylist and winner of BBC's Interior Design Masters, Banjo Veal. Banjo, thanks so much for chatting with me today. Well, thank you for having me. Congratulations on your new show, Designing the Hebrides. I saw the first episode, I got a sneak peek yesterday and I really enjoyed it. It was great. What can we expect from the new series? Uh, well, I mean, it um, picks up where things left um, on Interior Design Masters. I had lots of opportunities after the show to probably set up my interior design business anywhere and take on some, you know, cool clients. And for whatever um, foolish reason, I chose to do it on a tiny Scottish island where I live. Um, and um, that's when the same people that make Interior Design Masters thought that that might be a fun idea to follow me um, on the journey. So it kind of follows me as I do up some crazy places, some of them my friends, um, places like lighthouses and castles and fish shops and gin bars um, and um, I have to kind of convince the locals that they need a little flamboyant interior design zhuzhing. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, they're the they're the toughest um, clients of all that you know Michelle Agandahan has nothing on these guys they're tough. I can imagine yeah and you mentioned there every week you kind of tackle a different interior design project and yeah. um, can you tell us about your favorite one you encountered? Yeah well I think um, I, I loved all of them because they're kind of um, through doing up these spaces I got to learn about the people and the characters um, you know in these spaces and kind of get an insight into their life maybe the um, I wouldn't have otherwise had, but a really special one was the one that's super close to home for me, which was doing up a gin bar um, at the farm I live on for my 87-year-old best friend, Chris. So she's oh, a great yeah. It's a granny and she's a tough old bird and it's usually us two that are kind of making mischief together but this time she was my client and um it was a really tough brief because I wasn't allowed to buy a single new thing I had to use anything that I had on hand so I turned you know light shade I turned cowbells into light shades I used the local supermarket counter as the bar and clad that in the church pew panels um and had grannies weaving chairs for me and um, lo <laughs> looming seat cushions. So everyone in Tobermory had a hand making this space. So it was really special. And then we had a massive Kaylee dance off oh. at the end of it. And it was just a massive celebration. In terms of like when people um, commission you to do a project, mm -hmm. do they, are they, are most happy to kind of say, go on ahead, do what you want? Or well, do they have different... They say that until you start spending their money and, <laughs> and um, then really I think people also you know I you know you don't give them the benefit maybe that they do know what they want or they're just not confident themselves so I loved kind of taking everyone on a journey to kind of maybe figure out what their style was and what they really wanted or didn't know that they wanted mm. um, so I think it was really fun teasing that out of people, getting people out of their comfort zone. And maybe I got out of my comfort zone as well to get into their heads. So I did up the local rugby club, um, which was really not something I wanted to do. I'm like, I don't understand sport and like <laughs> why you throw a ball around in the cold white rain. So I got out there and I played rugby um, with the boy. Oh. And that was that <laughs> terrible and I'm still hurting from it but um I kind of understood you know why they do what they do and then they all picked up a paintbrush and you know did design for me and in the end I had them coming up with ideas and painting daisies on the wall oh um, brilliant yeah so it was a super fun it was a really lovely way that I never thought maybe design as a way to learn about people um and get into in, into their heads so these characters um, you know, it, design was the thing that maybe was, you know, what we were, could talk about. Otherwise, we'd have nothing in common. But mm. in do, doing it, yeah, I really, like, I genuinely made mates as well from that. So, um, oh, that's lovely. Lovely, yeah. And so you said there a bit about the characters, but where where does the inspiration for your designs come from? Is it from the the people themselves? 
Yeah, well, I think um, I'm I'm inspired by the characters that I'm designing for. I think I'm inspired by um, the materials that I can find. I think living on an island, uh, you have to be really resourceful. You can't run down to the shops, um, you know, and buy anything new or you couldn't get it delivered if, without like a great expense or logistical mm. nightmare. So I'm really inspired by the things I find and then that kind of informs my design. So in kind of um, not having much to work with, that's when the most kind of creative solutions come um, and that's exciting, figuring out, you know, what you can turn into something, um, you know, turning nothing into something special. What would you say the best and worst reactions to one of your makeovers have been? <laughs> Um, well, I think um, I think maybe my a bookshop and cafe and little family um, um, on Sky um, was really special because I think they were kind of at the end of their tether, like running a business and they weren't really inspired and they were overwhelmed by by what they had. And I kind of just helped them realize that they had a really special um, place. Um, mm. so that was really lovely, and I think um, the 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 worst one was my um, my mate that um, I did a lighthouse. Um, she lives in a lighthouse keeper's cottage, and um, she was a tough customer because she wanted a complete transformation, but didn't want me to do anything. Basically, <laughs> right. um, that's a hard one. A hard one. <laughs> was a pal and um it was always going to be really tough and um uh when it was time to reveal um what I had done she didn't hold back oh sure you, you can't you can't please everyone you can't please them <laughs> but I also love that because sometimes on these shows you either don't see the client's reaction or it's all lovely and great but she she ultimately loved it but she certainly told me what she didn't love can you tell us about a diy disaster that you might have had <laughs> well i've tried everything on the show and probably chances are like you know one in two things work correctly um sometimes it didn't make it on the show but i mean i tried decoupaging um mm. and that didn't quite work. Um, so there's a reason people don't really decoupage anymore. What uh, current trend would you like to see the back of and why? Oh, I think we're done with checks, aren't we? And gingham. Mm. I love maybe my show can bring tartan back. You know, it's tartan's turn for its moment in the sun. When you're planning a room scheme, what, what kind of things do you consider when you're planning that? Um, well, funnily enough, it might be strange, but I always pick the colour last. Um, so I like Ooh. to be inspired by all the treasure that I find. So, like, you know, I, you know, whether that's the materials or the furniture, because when you're a bit of a collector magpie, um, you don't know what you're working with until the end. So mm. if, if you're renovating from scratch and then, you know, and you enjoy a treasure hunt, like looking for things in salvage yards or antique fairs, you know, if you have a colour that you're shopping for, you might not buy a sofa or a chair that you love. But if you love a chair, you can actually, you know, build a room around that chair. Yeah. So, you know, buy things you love and then, you know, create a room around that. What advice would you give to anyone dreaming of becoming an interior designer? Well, I think you just got to give it a go because I think I I still struggle calling myself an interior designer because it's just all about confidence, isn't it? So mm. if you're confident in, you know, what you like um, and have a point of view in what you like, chances are someone else will like it as well. Might not be everyone's taste, but there's people out there that will love it. Even if you collect, you know, crazy cat figurines, there's someone else that probably does as well. <laughs> probably true been an interior design business um out of it yeah just, just go with what you love go with it yeah don't compromise and what's your own home like banjo or how, how have you decorated it well I I just noticed I dress like I dress to my heart you match your curtains I match my curtains <laughs> uh, I think 
like I love a little mix of like old and new, high and low. So um, I love I'm loving mustard at the moment. So I just repaint painted my kitchen mustard, and um, I, I love using all sorts of old things. So like I just hung up this um, parasol from Ibiza upside down. Um, on oh, my I love room. that. Yeah, um, so I just uh, I constantly am like collecting stuff and like um, chucking it in and seeing if it will work. It's a bit of a testing ground, I suppose. What would you say is your favourite room in your home and why? Um, uh, I love um, I love my bedroom because I think for me, I like bedrooms that are just super calm, um, that have like a really lovely crisp you know set of like linen sheets and you know lovely you know just a calm space for me when my mind's super busy and mm. every colorful and curated and collected like a bedroom as a place to just kind of come and calm down and curry into that's that's where it's at for me and what's the last thing you bought for your home and is there anything on your wish list Oh, last thing I bought. Um, oh, I bought a, um, a, a, a embroidered. Um, oh, I'll show you. Oh yeah. Oh, love it. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> uh, yeah, this girl crocheted it, and I loved it. I love know. it. Where did you get that? Um, I got it on Etsy. I think it's a cushion cover or something, but um, I just have it in my kitchen covering my dishwasher. And is there anything on your wish list that you really want? Oh, um, well, I'd love a really old house because my, my house is quite new and it was a kit mm -hmm. home. So I've been trying to make my house look old. And then I think, imagine if I had an old house that I didn't have to make look old. I yeah have more fun with it so I mean that's quite a big wish to that's have. quite a big one yeah but you one. gotta dream big you gotta dream big I'm going with it I'm sticking with it and so what's what's next for you Banjo I know you've got this new series out any other plans uh yeah I'm working on a book as well so um that's called Wild Isle Style um which is kind of taking you know, a similar line of the show, um, being really resourceful, using what we have, um, exploring things like mudlarking, Victorian dumps, collecting antique fairs, a kind of guide to design that doesn't cost the earth. So how can we uh, create like, you know, original, inventive, you know, interesting interiors um, that don't cost us a lot of money and don't kind of, aren't, you know, impacting the planet? And it's, yeah, through the lens of living on an island, because I think on an island, you just got to think like that. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, that sounds great. And yeah, as I said, I love the first episode of the oh. new series. I can't wait to watch the rest. Oh, cheers. Oh, thanks for your chat. Oh, thanks you, Banjo. And best All of right. luck with everything. Right. Cheers. Bye.